Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you how to make my famous carrot cake. I make this cake for my friends and family and they absolutely adore it. Not only is it moist but it's absolutely addictive. I personally adore it and everyone else does too and I hope you do. So let's get started. Preheat your oven to 170 degrees on a fan assisted setting. Next, grab your standing mixer. Uh, if you don't have a standing mixer, by all means you can use a mixing bowl and a whisk, but this makes things a lot easier. So you'll want your paddle attachment and just put this inside. To this, you're going to add 300 millilitres of sunflower oil. Now add 100 grams of brown sugar. Then add 100 grams of white sugar. And because I'm living in Turkey, they don't actually have light brown sugar. They've got one brown sugar and one white sugar. They don't have anything else. Um, so if you are living in a country that has golden caster sugar, by all means use 200 grams of that instead of the 100 grams of white sugar and brown sugar. Now to this, you're going to add three medium eggs. Don't want that in there. And for those who don't know how to crack eggs, what you want to do is grab it by the corners and tap it on the edge of the mixing bowl. And you want to grab the middle, which is now split, and just open. And it, the egg will simply flop out of it. That's the last one. There we go. Now you're going to mix this on a medium speed and don't be concerned if it looks like it's splitting, it's fine. It will all be mixed together once you add the dry ingredients. So mix on a medium speed. So the oil and the eggs and the sugar are now well incorporated and it's time to add your dry ingredients, which you'll do gradually whilst it's mixing. But what you want is 300 grams of plain flour one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and just a splash of vanilla bean paste. You can use vanilla extract or vanilla um, powder, whatever you'd like, but it doesn't matter as long as it's vanilla. Now, turn your machine back on, on a medium speed, and slowly add flour. I like to do mine with a teaspoon. You can do it by hand, whatever suits you to be honest. But I just think this is the less messy way of doing it. Now, add the, this is the bicarb and baking soda. I'm just mix that. Okay. And then this is the ground ginger, cinnamon and salt. And then, and then add the rest of the plain flour. That smells so cinnamony. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> you go. Add the rest. Now add your vanilla. And just a splash of that will do. There you go. Not too much because um, vanilla bean paste and vanilla extract actually have added sugar to them, so you don't want to add too much. Um, but a good substitute to use is vanilla powder because it's basically ground down um, vanilla pods with no added sugar, which is awesome. So mix this a little more until everything is well incorporated and you don't see any flour. And turn that off. Now it's time to add the carrots to your carrot cake. Uh, I have 300 grams of grated carrots here that I simply peeled and then grated and you just want to open the standing mixer now and scrape down the paddle attachment. You need to add the carrots by hand um, with a whisk and just stir them in slowly. The um, standing mixer doesn't do as great a job as you can. So just get all of the mixture off of the paddle. Now you want to add your 300 grams of grated carrots to the mixture. Just pour it all in. And this isn't a particularly wet 
mixture so it will be it will be sticky it's not going to be dry but it will be sticky so just now incorporate the carrots and if you like to add walnuts to your carrot cake well then at this stage this is when you would add your walnuts with the carrots I personally don't like walnuts in my carrot cake so I've taken them out but by all means you can add them in terms of how many you would want to add you'd want to add about 100 grams of chopped walnuts to this and just stir so I finished mixing in the carrots into the mixture and this is what it looks like um, and don't feel concerned by the amount of carrots that you see there most of them do dissolve um, and what you're left with is an absolutely incredible carrot cake uh, now you'll need a cake tin um, and I like to line it with a cake case, just plonk that in there and what I like to do is divide this mixture into three portions and cook them individually and that way you get a nice three tiered cake and it sounds complicated but it's really not, trust me it's really not. So by eye you just want to measure out a third of this into the cake tin. If you've got three cake tins, then by all means do three at once. I only have one, so I do them one at a time. Now I've divided this into a third of the mixture, just spread it along the bottom. You want it to be smooth because obviously you'll be stacking them. Now place this into your preheated oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Once that's cooked, repeat the process again, get another cake case, put some another uh, bit of the mixture into it and cook it until all three pieces are finished. I've just taken the third and final layer of the cake out of the oven and placed it on a cooling rack. Whilst all of the layers are cooling, I'm going to make the cream cheese frosting. You can find the cream cheese frosting recipe for my red velvet cupcakes right there. Just click there for that. Um, but stay with me and I'll show you how to frost the cake. So, what you're going to do is, in your freestanding mixer with the paddle attachment, place 600 grams of icing sugar that I've already sifted and just pour that in here. A little icing sugar cloud. To this, add 100 grams of unsalted softened butter that I've left at room temperature. Just pour that in there. And what you're going to do is, on a slow to medium speed, mix until the icing sugar and the butter are well incorporated. And what I like to do is cover the freestanding mixer with a towel, otherwise you get a, uh, like a, a cloud storm in your kitchen. So just place this over and tuck it in at the back of the freestanding mixer, and that way you can go hands free, um, and just put it on a low to medium speed. Occasionally check on the mixture to see whether it's stuck on the sides or something. If it is, stop the machine and scrape down with a spatula. But in this case, it actually has it stuck along the sides. And you can remove the towel now uh, because the butter has kind of stuck to the icing sugar. And it's almost like a crumbly texture, so it's not going anywhere and you won't have any more icing sugar clouds. In order to get an incredibly cream cheesy frosting um, that's silky smooth, you need to blend the icing sugar and butter for at least four to five minutes. Now it's time to add the cream cheese. You'll want to add it cold, so let me just grab it from the fridge. I have 300 grams of cream cheese. If you're living in Turkey, it's called Beyaz. You won't find the familiar brands like Philadelphia here. They only have one cream cheese brand and that is called Beyaz. So you're going to add this gradually on a medium speed. Add it piece by piece. As you can see, it's blending beautifully. It's creamy and silky smooth. However, you need to leave it mixing for at least five minutes. This next step is entirely optional. But because this is a carrot cake and it's got cinnamon in it and ginger and stuff, I really like to add just a, a hint of cinnamon to this icing. I really feel it um, enhances the flavours of the carrot cake. So add half a teaspoon, relatively heaped, 
to the cream cheese frosting and blend. It's important not to over whisk your cream cheese frosting because if you go over that four minute to five minute period, it can become liquidy and you do not want that because there's no returning from that. So only blend it for between four to five minutes. And there you have it, your cream cheese is done. Now it's time to assemble the cake. To ice your cake, take one of the layers and place it on a flat surface. Take a bit of the icing and just put it in the center. Use a palette knife to move the icing around the layer of cake. And what you want to do is sort of move it around in a circle, circular motion. And don't bring it too far to the edges because when you place the next layer on it, you're gonna push it down a little bit and the, the icing will kind of ooze out. So you don't want it to be too close to the edges before doing that. And try to make this as level as you can. If you need to get down and just look at it and bring your palette knife along the top of it just to make sure it's flat. And always clean your palette knife on the side of your mixing bowl and that way you'll always get a nice smooth top. Grab your next layer. Place it on top again. And like I said, give it a little push and make sure that the two layers are lined up because you don't really want layers not lined up because the cake will just kind of slide apart. And again, repeat the previous process. Okay. And now grab the final layer. There you go. And again, just line it up. And now just repeat the icing process. You'll want to ice the whole of the outside. So put enough icing on the top of it. Use your palette knife again, scrape down your spatula. And it sometimes help, helps to hold the layer as you move this around because this one has a tendency to slide around. You just kind of want to move it around. Now for the sides. So use your spatula now to grab some of the icing and put it on the side. You just kind of spread it down and around. Kind of pushing it into the crevices around the cake. Just move it around, put some more icing on it. And at this stage, don't worry about it looking pretty. You make it look pretty later on. So again, just move it around, scrape it down the sides. And just repeat until you've finished. So now take your spatula and put it along the, the corner of the cake and just turn the plate. And that way you're getting a nice even edge along your cake. And don't worry, this is only the crumb coat. So the crumb coat is just collecting the bits of cake that otherwise would get stuck in the icing as you're trying to make it look pretty. So now time for the final coat. And now, again, lightly push along the sides of the cake just so you get an even corner on the cake. I know it doesn't make sense because there are no corners to a round, round shape, but <laughs> you get nice, nice edges. Let's do that. Okay. 
And now for the top. So what you want to do is on the corners, kind of angle your palette knife so it's not flat, and just brush it along the corners. And that's it. And then now you can bring in the middle. Again, angle your palette knife. This next step is entirely optional. I like to decorate my carrot cake with a few walnut pieces and a sprinkle of cinnamon. You can take a little uh, sieve and kind of sprinkle the cinnamon over the cake, but I like to use my fingers and just kind of sprinkle it on the edges. Now it's time to add the walnut. And I like to get a whole piece and just stick it along the edges. Almost as if you get one per slice type thing. So that's it, it's really as easy as that to make a wonderful carrot cake. Store in an airtight container or a lovely cake tin like this um, and it will keep for up to about four or five days. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe and for more recipes subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!